Hey, I'm Mike Baccarell, and today we're going to take a look at a repeating chromatic lick that Pat Metheny uses. Let's take a look. So this lick happens over at 2-5-1, and we're in the key of C, so we're starting with D minor 7, G7, C major 7. Now, you probably notice that this line just takes one idea and moves up the fretboard without really any regard for scales or, or pages or anything. And that's true, and that's exactly what it does. Because the point of this kind of thing is we started in, in key and we ended in key, but the middle is all just tension. And that's what a 2-5 kind of is a lot of times. You know, when we take, you know, dominant chord to a major chord, we're taking tension to a resolution. And we can achieve tension in a number of ways. We can use leading tones. We can use altered scales. We, we could use, our, you know, all kinds of superimposed arpeggios. We could use rhythm to, to create a tension. In this case, he's just using chromaticism, which works really well because it builds up a ton of tension. And once we release, it all works out. So what he's doing in this line is he's basically playing a D minor arpeggio. He's playing A here on the, the second fret of the third string. Then come down to F. We're pulling off to E and going down to D. So we're kind of outlining this D minor triad and we're just adding the second. And then we're just going up. We're going up to basically this A minor triad. We're going from D minor to this A minor triad. And once we get there, we reach our point of resolution, which in this case is the fifth of the C chord. And we go up at G major seven arpeggio. And that arpeggio gives us the fifth, then the seventh, ninth, and the sharp 11. So it gives us a nice colorful sound. And in there on a C major seven chord. This line is starting somewhere and ending somewhere. So we can we can take this concept and do anything with this. We can take it like a, just a major triad. We're playing a blues. And we want to get to the four chord. So I went up chromatically. And I, I kind of went back a little bit. I went up a little bit. And I came into falling on the D chord. So with lines like this, we just have to have a, a resolution point in mind, and we have to just work our way there. And that's all it really is. So we can take any shape, any grouping of notes, and move them up chromatically, as long as they worked over the first chord, and we can work our way to a resolution note of a chord tone for the last chord, we can get there. So we can take our pages. All these ideas I just demonstrated are working from D minor, just short two five, or even just G seven, going to C. So you so I got there again. And one thing Pat does a lot when he's playing is instead of just moving all the always in one direction, he'll move backwards a little bit, move forward, and he might do this for a long time. You might do this for half a chorus in some cases. You might do this for just a couple beats. This is something you can take and run with for a while, or you can just use to add a little bit of flavor to what you're doing. And it's an easy way to get out of always thinking so much about theory and scales and all these different things when we're playing over two fives or over really any progression. Because in this case, we're not thinking of something. We're thinking of where we want to go musically, and we're working our way there. And repetition is always a great idea for phrasing. The more we repeat ourselves, the more the audience has something to latch onto. And a phrase like this, they can grab onto and it's getting uncomfortable, it's getting uncomfortable, getting uncomfortable. And when we reach that resolution, they'll feel it too. Now, as far as picking for this, this, this particular line, pick it using my middle finger for the high note on the, on the third string, and, I, and then I pick, and I go down, stroke, and then up stroke here. Why do I use my finger? I have no idea. 
I don't do that for any other lick that I play ever. I just use it on this one idea for some reason. I mean, you can easily alternate pick this too. Going down, up, up. So this is a really short lesson, but it's something I want you to experiment with. Try it. You know, pick any progression or any, basically all you have to have in mind is where you're going and start somewhere and then find a way to musically get there by going up and down chromatically. And as long as you have a resolution in mind, it'll work itself out. And the more you do this, the more comfortable you get with the idea. It's really fun to work with. It's a cool little trick to add to your playing and to really help build something. At the end of a chorus, you know, if you're lead, you want to lead in really strong to the second chorus, you could do something like this. And any good drummer and bass player playing with will latch on to what you're doing and really hit that second chorus really hard. So this is a really cool thing to build tension, not just in your notes, but in your solo arc too. Thanks for checking out the lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.